Whether you're an existing Tesla owner that's recently updated their software and things might look a little bit different, or a brand new Tesla owner that is new to Tesla and the touchscreen setup here, today I'm gonna to be walking through every single feature and functionality on the touchscreen, every single button, everything you may need to know to drive your car. So to start out, the screen is kind of split up into some different sections here. So on the left side, we've got kind of the, just the general car status here, and we'll do a drive in a second to see what that looks like while we are driving. On the right here is the map. That is the kind of default bottom level view, but then as we open up things, they will cover up the map and have other menu options there. And then on the bottom here, this is here all the time. These are kind of your main functions you may need to access, and we'll walk through each of these pieces individually. So if we start out on the left side here, you can see it's very blank, just showing the car status here. So we've just got some main things we can do to the car. So we can press on this front button up here that will open up the front trunk. We can press on this button back here that will open up the trunk. If we press on this lightning bolt, this will open up the charge port and also bring up the charging screen here. And then we can also lock and unlock the vehicle from here as well. The only other thing on this left panel is our percentage up at the top here. So we can actually press on the battery to bring up that same charging screen. And we can also quickly switch between miles and percent by clicking on that number there. So if I switch to miles, you'll see I have 177 miles of range remaining. But if I click back, you can see I'm at 60%. So very little on this far left screen. So we're actually gonna close everything up and take a short drive over to a charger and see what the screen looks like while we're driving. Quick tip here as well, if you have a charging location pulled up on your maps, so you can actually share it to the touchscreen and it will then show us our route to get to that charger. So we're gonna now press on the brake and you'll see some of these warning lights will actually pop up on the left. That's where you'll see warnings if they do come up while you're driving. You'll also see our gear is now popped up here since we have put our foot on the brake. So we've got P, R, N, and D for park, reverse, neutral, and drive. So we'll flip up to go into reverse here. You'll see our backup camera now pops up. And you'll also see a lot of things now start to pop up now that we are in gear. So we've got this hold that shows right here. So if I were to you know, let off of the brake, my car is gonna hold in uh, park here or hold with the brake on. You also see our speed limit up at the top right there that will show either the current speed limit based on the maps or the most recent speed limit sign that we've seen. And you'll see I'm kind of close to some area here and our parking sensors will actually show up when we're kind of parking or, and getting into space. So we're gonna start backing up here. And you'll see as soon as I have uh, started to move, my gear is now showing as my miles per hour. So they've actually shifted that up to the left here so that it's much easier to see what your current speed is. And as we get going here, you also see a lot more visualization on the screen. So we may see some lane lines, we may see some other things, and I'll also be able to show you what autopilot looks like once we get on the, on the highway. At the top here, we've also got this energy bar. So if you see it kind of moving to the right and turn black, that means I am using energy. But then if I let off of the accelerator and slow down a little bit, you'll see the green line shows up, meaning that I'm using regen braking and I'm putting battery or energy back into the battery as I slow down. You also see as we kind of get through and get moving a little bit here, we'll show this little autopilot symbol comes up at the top left. That is showing us that we are able to put on autopilot right now. And if we were to enable autopilot, our max speed would be what is right to the left of the speed limit sign there. So I've got it set as just a five miles per hour offset. So if I were to trigger autopilot right here, you'll see that it'll now go up to 30 miles per hour. That autopilot symbol will then turn blue to show I'm on autopilot. And we've got those lane lines now showing up. So. We're gonna to toggle that off since we are kind of on a back road here. On the right side here, we do also have our map view. So they've shifted this round a little bit. At the bottom now, we're seeing kind of just our overall trip stats. We can see what our estimated time of arrival is, how much time we have left, and what our distance remaining is. And you can also see what our projected state of charge is when we arrive at that charging station. And then if, for example, we have something covering the screen, we'll actually see that the directions will move over to the left side of the screen. So if you do have you know, your camera up or music up or you're looking at something on the touchscreen, 
your directions or your next turn will now show up at the top here. So it's a little bit easier to see and you can you know, see your next turn without seeing the entire map. So I'm gonna close that since I like the map view a little bit better. And I'm turning on my right turn signal and I do have the side view camera set to turn on and show when I am turning or have my turn signal enabled. I'll show you that setting in a little bit. We're gonna turn out onto the road here and you may now see, you know, some more street features, some more cars show up on this visualization on the left side of the screen. This is the FSD visualization. I do not have FSD beta, so obviously this is gonna look a little bit different depending on what software you have. You'll see we've just come to a stoplight here and that hold is now showing since I have let my foot off of the accelerator. I am not pressing on the brake and I've got it just set to hold, so it's gonna hold and brake for me without pressing on the actual physical brake. You also see we're at a stoplight here and we're the first car in line. We've actually got the live view of the stoplight there, so that's pretty neat. So seeing we got a turn lane next to me, it's showing the arrows on the pavement there. I'm gonna flip on autopilot a second. So if you uh, do have autopilot on, you'll see these two blue lines on either side. If you do have navigate on autopilot like I do and you are on a, a major highway, this blue line will actually be in the center kind of showing the route that your car is taking instead of just showing you know, the normal autopilot. So if I take that off, you'll see those lines disappear. If you do just have normal cruise control on, so if you just do a single swipe, you'll hear a single ding there. That just shows that you know, cruise control is on and it will show your max speed right there at the top right. So we can then adjust that with the finger wheel to you know, whatever speed you want just leave it at 50. If you did hear that ding there, that is the traffic light chime you can enable. So if the light is turned green while you're sitting at a red light, it will ding at you to tell you it is time to continue driving. And we have now arrived at the charger. You can see me backing in towards it here. I'm gonna put the vehicle in park and plug in so you can see what this looks like while we are plugged into a charger. As you can see, we are now plugged in and this left pane has changed a little bit, but our charging screen has also opened up automatically so you can see what's going on with your charging session and change some controls here. I'll get to that in a second, but the left pane obviously looks a little bit different at the top here. Top left, we've actually got our time remaining, so Obviously, most important part of charging, especially when you're on the road, is how much longer is it going to take so your car has hit its charge limit. Along the bottom here, we've also got our current kilowatt power that we are pulling onto our vehicle. We can see how much battery we've added in kilowatt hours. We can see the current amps that our vehicle is pulling, and we can see the current voltage we are charging at. So we're at 233 right now. We can also see our charge limit there is set at 80%. And that bar we saw earlier that was showing our energy while we were driving is now just pulsing green to show that we are charging. Again, similar to our uh, range, we can actually change and toggle this to see some different information. So if your vehicle is set in miles, instead of seeing our kilowatts, we will see our miles per hour that we're charging at. So you can see we're kind of fluctuating between 21, 24 miles per hour. We can see how many miles of range we've added there and we can see our charge limit in miles instead of percentage. So if I change that to percent, you'll see all of that change back. Um, I like that, kind of seeing the engineering terms there uh, personally, but if you're more of a miles person, you can obviously toggle between the two there. One last thing on the left pane that may or may not be there depending on how you have it set up. By default, it should be there, but you may see your music be here. So if you are listening to music, you'll have this little tab that pops up. So you have quick views to uh, music or podcast controls in this case. So if you click on the square here, that will actually bring up kind of the main page showing you the uh, main music you are playing now, or maybe the playlist you're on will show there. You'll have kind of your basic music controls there, but you can also swipe between the different tabs here. So they have changed this recently where if you swipe, you can actually see current trip efficiency, efficiency since your last charge, and your current odometer. So if you just need to view that really quickly, you can do that via these tiles here. If you continue swiping, you can also see your tire pressure. So if your TPMS are set up, you'll see your tire pressure to show up on this tile here as well. 
I've been clicking around some on the bottom here, but let's talk about this bottom pane next. So we've got a lot of kind of our basic controls and I'll walk through all these apps here in a second. But on the left here is just our main car menu. So if you wanna to get to kind of the bulk of the controls, this car symbol on the bottom left is how you get to those. That's how you control basically every setting on the car is through this little car menu here. So if you click on that, that will bring that up. Next to that, you've got your climate controls. So by default, you're probably gonna just have your temperature right here. You can toggle that up and down and adjust that. And you can see when you do that, you get access to some more controls here. So you can either open up the entire climate settings if you hit the gear icon there. If we swipe that down and go back to that menu, you can adjust your temperature right here by just clicking and dragging if you wanna adjust that even more. You can also turn on your seat heaters from here. So if you click on the, uh, if you click on the seat heater button there, it will adjust them. And you may not see your seat heaters kind of on this bottom menu here, and that is because you can actually remove them if you don't want them here. So you can add just some basic climate controls to the bottom window here by holding, pressing and holding on any of these apps. So I like having these seat heater things here. It's been pretty cold here in Ohio recently, so it's nice just having quick access to those seat heaters. If we continue on the climate controls here, you've got obviously your front defroster. If you press it once, it will go to cool. If you press it again, it'll go to heat and you'll hear the, the heat ramp up there. And let's turn that off. And then we've also got our rear defroster here as well that will just put on heat there. And then you can also split the, uh, split the AC or split the HVAC act from here as well. So if you click on split, that will either set the, the climate the same on both sides. So you can see now if I'm adjusting it, it's actually gonna change the temperature over here. Whereas maybe if you and your passenger want different controls, you can hit split there. Now, if I adjust my side, the right side is not gonna change. So you can adjust a lot of the major controls from the climate side right here. If you do want some more climate controls, you can either hit the setting button here, that will bring up that, or you can just swipe up from the temperature right there. That will bring you to this main climate screen. So a lot of options on here. You obviously can adjust your vents pretty quickly from here on both the, the passenger and driver's side. You can turn on and off the climate just with that power button there. So if you turn it off, it'll just go off completely. You can toggle on and off auto. So if I toggle off auto, you then have access to some more controls here. So you can adjust your fan speed right here. You can adjust where in the car that's HVAC or that air is flowing out of. You can toggle on and off your auto seat heaters from here as well. So if you do set the temperature up really high, your seat heater is gonna come on automatically and get a little toasty for you. So I'm gonna to toggle that back down because it's actually a pretty nice day right now. Other options you have here are air circulation. So if you wanna circulate the air in the cabin, you can do that from there. On the right side, you've got some schedule options. So if you do wanna schedule kind of off-peak conditioning of your vehicle, you can set that from here. So right now I have this preconditioned to just uh, set the climate and get the battery and car preconditioned by 8 a.m. on weekdays when we're leaving for work. So if we close out of that, you can adjust the schedule there. You've also got the option to just keep climate on. So if you do leave that on, when you leave the car, your climate will stay on. So maybe you're running into the store real quick and just want the climate to stay on while you're you know, shopping for maybe a few minutes so that the car stays either cold or warm, you can leave it on there. I've also got dog mode here. So when you leave the vehicle, uh, very similar, the climate is gonna stay on, but you'll also get a screen that shows up here that says, hey, the climate is set at whatever temperature. Don't worry about my, my pet in the vehicle. They are completely comfortable. We've also got camp mode, um, very similar to keeping climate on, but this also disables some things like the security alarm and the walk away door lock. So if you are camping with your car, you can leave camp mode on, it will leave climate on. And when you leave, you're not risking, you know, locking yourself out of your car if you don't bring your, you know, your key with you, or maybe uh, you leave your car, your phone in here without Bluetooth on or something like that. That is camp mode. Right side controls are very similar for passengers, so you can adjust all those there. And then on the left side, we can also adjust the rear controls. So we do have the rear fan on right now. You can turn that off if you don't want air coming out of the rear fan where your passengers are sitting. 
And you can also adjust the seat heaters individually on all the seats here. So you can, you can toggle those off, adjust them, and then if you just want them all off, you can hit that button there and it will turn them all off. And as you've seen, kind of as I'm going through here, this does drop automatically. So if you are messing with stuff, don't worry about swiping this away. It does go away fairly quickly after you've been done uh, messing with controls and adjusting things. So we're going to turn camp mode off, actually, since I'm actively sitting in the car. And we'll close that. You can manually swipe that down as well, either by just dragging in the middle or dragging on the little temperature icon there. So... That is it for the climate controls there. Let's go through some of these controls at the bottom. So if you do click on this three dots here, you can see you kind of get full access to all the apps you might have on your car, all the different options you have here. If you press and hold on any of these, this is where you can adjust those. So like I said, you can add some different climate icons down at the bottom left here. So if there are certain things you just kind of want to have access to at all times, you can put them on that bar there. You have kind of three options for your main apps, if you will. So right now I just have my calendar, my messages, and my camera up there. Actually, I think you can add four. Yeah, you can add four. So I do have music down there as well. I use Spotify for the most part, so I leave that kind of available at all times. And then as you'll see on the right here, we also have recent apps. So if I just close out of that, these two apps right here, if they are not one of these main four or three, that you have on all the time, they will show up on the right side here. So I was just looking at my energy screen. So since I just looked at that, it will pop up on the bottom right there. Before we get into some more of these controls, let's talk about some of the, the map side of things here. So at the top here, we've got some more just things that are here all the time if you are driving around. So we've got our lock button at the top here. If you click that, you can also lock the vehicle from there. We've got our current time. We've got our current temperature. We've got sentry mode toggle on and off. So if I do click that, we can put sentry mode on. We'll leave it off for now since I'm sitting in the car. We've got quick access to our profiles here. So if you do have different drivers that maybe are using your car, this is where you're gonna change those around. And you can see I'm at the top there and I do have easy entry on right now. So if you do wanna enable easy entry, if you're in your profile, you can toggle on this easy entry mode. And basically what this does is put your seat in maybe a more comfortable position for getting into the car. And then as soon as you shift into drive, it moves into your driving position. So a little bit more comfortable for getting in and out of the car. If you do want to add more drivers, you can do that from here. You just enter in their name, hit create profile. It then will save all of the different driving positions. So if you, you know, you adjust your seat or anything, you'll see it change at the bottom here if I want to save any of those seat positions or mirror positions or anything like that. So this is also now able to be linked to your Tesla profile. So you see my name, my email, my Tesla picture all show up here. And this is then linked to my Tesla profile. If I were to get another Tesla and log in, it's going to adapt all of those same mirror positions, seat positions, all of my preferences are then saved to my profile. So I can hop in any Tesla basically, um, add my profile and I'm good to go, which is really handy. On the map here as well, you can you know move around, zoom in, zoom out, whatever you wanna do on the map, pretty easy and intuitive there. You can also adjust your t compass as well. So if you just want north up, you can click on that. If you click again, it's gonna point you in the direction that your car is facing. Um, you can also see the imagery where that's coming from, from Google. You can see, you know, your current location right there. If you do tap on the screen, you're going to get some additional options here on the right. So since I have premium connectivity, I can actually toggle on and off the satellite view of the map. So if you do prefer, you know, just a standard map view over a satellite view, you can toggle that on and off right there. I'm going to zoom out to kind of a busier part of town. You can see I actually have traffic on right now as well. So I've got some red and orange areas on these certain roads and that's because I have traffic on. If you want that off, you can just hit the little traffic light there and that will remove those from the map. We've also got this pin thing here and this basically just turns on and off points of interest. So if you don't wanna see you know random kind of things popping up as you're driving, you can just turn that off and just see city names and street names just to make things easy. I actually like leaving this on. It's kind of fun seeing what's around you as you're driving around. And then at the bottom here, we've got this charger icon. So when you click on this, we've also got some filters at the top. So 
if you have all of them on, you'll see, you know, kind of slow, medium, and fast charging, depending on what you want to see. If we only want to see, you know, AC chargers or slower chargers, we can see those. If we only want to see, you know, city chargers, we can see those. So we've got one in downtown that's kind of a, a destination or, or urban supercharger. And then if we want to see, you know, the, the very fast chargers, we can just toggle that on and only see superchargers there. So we can see, you know, the fastest 150 kilowatts plus will then pop up if we click on those. For the superchargers as well, you can click into any of these. So let's just look at the Grove City one, for example. And it's actually going to route us to that supercharger. I'm going to end that real quick. But let's actually click on kind of the map view to see some information about that. So if we are just looking at a supercharger, we can see, first off, how many stalls are available is what that red pin shows there. So there's only actually one stall available right now at the Grove City supercharger. We've got the current wait time there as well. It looks like one, it, one just opened up actually. So we've got no wait time now. We can see how many stalls are there, what that max output of those chargers are. And we can also see the pricing of those chargers as well. So we've got our price per kilowatt hour since we're in Ohio. We can see it's a little bit more expensive in the middle of the day, a little bit cheaper in the evening after midnight. And we've also got our idle fees showing up there as well. So you can see all the supercharger information there. You can favorite them if that's one you, that you are frequenting and want to be able to see in your navigation a little bit more often. All of that information on the supercharger will pop up there. And as I mentioned, you can also navigate to it quickly from there also. So we'll go ahead and end that trip. So what about navigation? So if we are navigating somewhere, I showed some of it as we were driving to this charger, but let's just say that we are going to Chicago, for example. We'll do kind of a nice longer drive to show you what that looks like. When you type in a destination, if it is farther away, it's gonna show you and start calculating what superchargers it suggests you stop at along the route. Really handy so you know exactly where you need to stop, how long you need to stop, all that information. We can see after that's kind of refreshed, it's now gonna zoom us into where we're at and start showing us directions on where to turn and do all that. If we click on that, we'll expand it. We can see the individual turns that we need to take, kind of scroll through and see what's going on there. We can see the superchargers we need to stop at, and then we can see what our estimated arrival state of charge is and our arrival time is if we were to leave right now. If you do wanna kind of take charging into your own hands and decide when you wanna stop, you can remove all charging stops and it'll just do kind of basic navigation. I don't recommend this just because, you know, you're probably going to have to stop and charge if you're taking a longer route and it will, you know, do all this for you. And there's no reason to, to not have that on, in my opinion. At the bottom here, we've then got, since we removed the charging stops, it doesn't know what our current arrival state of charge will be, but that will show up there. Our destination will show up next to the pin there. Estimated time of arrival will show there. Again, we had the char starting charging stops off. So if we add those back in, we'll see some more accurate information of what that trip will look like. And when we are on a longer route, it's actually gonna show us what our next stop is. It's not gonna show us what our final destination is. You can see that in the top part there. So since we've got our, our first stop in Lima, Ohio there, this is our arrival information, You know how much longer we've got to drive, how long it will take, and what our arrival time is. We can turn on and off, navigate on autopilot here. So if you do have that enabled in your car, that is where you can turn that on and off. And then we've got some trip options here as well. So if we do need to add a stop, we can click there and then search for whatever destination we may need to stop at along the route and you know, on our way to the supercharger, what that might look like. We can also edit our trip. So if we click on that, we can actually add stops in here. So let's say, hey, we wanna stop in Indianapolis. Let's add that stop in here and we can add that to the trip. So now it's gonna to go to Chicago and then Indianapolis, and we can then toggle these around as well if we maybe wanna swing through Indy. On the way to Chicago, we can, we can add that in and then that becomes a part of our trip. So we've got a few more charging stops now. Last thing we can do is just kinda of edit some of our trip options. So if we go into settings, we've got all of our navigation options here. So you can, add on your or turn up your navigation volume if you want to hear the voice kind of call out what your next directions are you can turn on automatic navigation which will actually just automatically route you to your next calendar event or if you're at work it will automatically route you home and vice versa 
pretty neat, but I have seen it kind of just not act right, so I just like to leave that off. We've also got our trip planner. This is that setting that will automatically add supercharger stops. Again, I suggest adding that and keeping that on. We've got online routing, so if you do run into traffic conditions and it notices a reroute that may save you some time, you can adjust how much time is worth it for you to reroute. So. I have mine set as low as possible. If there's a traffic jam coming up, I would like to keep moving and, and get around that if possible. I have that set at five minutes. And then we've just got some filters here for routing. So you can either avoid ferries, avoid tolls, and also the option for HOV lanes if you do have those in your state. That's about it on the navigation there. So let's jump into the main Tesla menu and controls here, because this is really where we get into the bulk of the capabilities. So first off, anytime you are, you know, looking at a, a, uh, a settings menu or anything like that, and you close out of it, it's always gonna bring you to these quick controls when you click on the car icon. So don't worry about, you know, being buried in some menu and then closing it and like losing these kind of quick controls that you may need to access a lot quickly, a lot more quickly. They will always be here when you open it up. So. Just starting at the top here, we've got our current driver profile. This is, you know, the same button as at the top here. So if you do want to go in here and edit any of those profiles, you can do that from here. Um, you've also got options to add a MyQ account. If you do have a MyQ garage door opener, you can link that here for uh, opening and closing your garage door. We've also got alerts here at the top. So if you do have any camera or you know just general vehicle alerts that may have popped up sometimes they can pop up a little bit quickly and you may not see them so anytime an alert pops up it's now stored in here so you can look through and see you know what's going on or what errors you may have run into we've also got bluetooth here at the top so if we click on that we can link our bluetooth device so if we have you know, our, our phone connected, you can set the priority device. So this will attempt to connect to my S22 before any other device in the car. It is set as a priority device. I have it set to sync contacts. So if I do have text messages come in or calls come in, I know who it is. I'm syncing messages as well. So if I do have text messages come in, I'll see them on the text message app here. And I do have chime on new message turned off. So I'm not getting dinged anytime a new text come in can also, you know, forget the device or disconnect the device. Pretty self-explanatory there. If you need to add a new device, you'll do that here. And we do have this information option at the top right for just some troubleshooting tips. If you do run into any issues with linking your device, you can troubleshoot them there. So that's it on Bluetooth there. Let's get back into the menu. And then at the top right, we do have LTE. So your car should have LTE built in, but if you do want to connect to a Wi-Fi signal, you can do that from that button up at the top here. So if you want to connect to your home Wi-Fi or hotel Wi-Fi or something like that, you can do all that there. And then you do have Wi-Fi settings as well. So if you do just need to manually add a Wi-Fi network, you can do that from here. At the top, you've got your lights, so you can just toggle them off quickly from there. You can turn on parking lot lights only. You can turn on your headlights or you can just set them to auto. You can also turn on your high beams from there as well. And you'll see when I do that, it's actually gonna pop up with the light settings there. So if you are just controlling that with the stocks, you'll get those quick controls that pop up here as well. Turn those off. You can also fold your mirrors, fold and unfold from here. That will fold the mirrors. You can turn child locks on and off for either you know the left or right side or both sides, depending on what you prefer. Can turn on windows locks so nobody can adjust your windows and then you can also open the glove box from here so no manual button on the glove box but you can press that pretty quickly from the quick controls here we'll turn off both of those locks you can also adjust wipers right here auto works pretty well but if you do want to manually control them you can do that from here and you'll see as i click on those or adjust from the steering wheel we do have those quick controls that pop up here as well if you don't want to dig into the menu to see those. If you do need to adjust your mirrors at all, you can do that from here. You can use then the scroll wheel on the left side to adjust your mirrors. So you'll click on left, adjust those. Click on right, then adjust them as well. Then once you save them, those will save you save to your driver profile. Now you can also turn on the auto tilt, auto fold, and auto dim. So 
Auto tilt will tilt them down when you're in reverse or trying to park so you can see the lane lines a little bit easier. Auto fold will just fold them when you park your vehicle so they don't get dinged as easily. And then auto dim actually darkens the mirrors at night to help reduce glare from headlights and things. So personal preference there on what you like, but I like to leave the auto dim off because I think the mirrors get just a little bit too dark. Can adjust your steering wheel from here. So again, you'll just use the left scroll wheel to adjust how you want your steering wheel set up and then save it to your profile. Can turn on the recording for your um, your dash cam. If you do have that set up, if you click on that, it's gonna save the most recent recording. You can also save the recording from the main, uh, the main dashboard here. So I have added the dash cam here. So when I click that, uh, when I'm driving, it's gonna save the most recent clip can also toggle sentry mode on and off from here. So same function as this dot at the top here, but also in the quick control menus. can also adjust your screen brightness from here. So if I do, you know, drag this down, it's gonna get a little bit dimmer. I can also turn it up or just put it into auto. I've left it all the way up for this tutorial so it's a little bit easier to see. So that's it on the main, just quick controls menu there. We'll get into pedals and steering now. At the top here, we've got acceleration, so you can set either chill or standard. If you do have the acceleration boost on unlocked, you'll see sport acceleration on the right there. I don't have that unlocked, unfortunately. Steering mode, you can set it as either comfort, standard, or sport. Sport is a little bit heavier, kind of more, more stiff steering, depending on what you prefer there. The stopping mode here at the bottom is what I described when we were driving earlier. So right now when I let off of the accelerator, it's gonna bring me to a complete stop and hold the vehicle with the brakes on. I don't have to press the brake pedal at all if I don't want to. But if you want it to creep and kind of act like a gas car, it will slowly roll forward if you put it into creep mode. So if you do want to emulate a gas car, you can do that. And then you can also use roll, which is similar, but instead of you know going forward, it's just gonna roll depending on uh, what kind of situation you're in when you let off of the pedals. But I'm gonna leave it in hold because that's what I prefer. Regen braking, we've got either low or standard. So standard is gonna be a bit more aggressive. It's gonna feel like a full brake when you, when you let off of the pedal. And then if you want to apply brakes when regen braking is limited, just to kind of keep that regen braking consistent when it is cold, or maybe you just got limited regen braking, you can set that on there as well. We've also got slip start down here. So if your vehicle is stuck in either you know snow, sand, or mud is the examples they give, you can toggle that on and it will allow you to hopefully get out of that situation. If we jump down to charging now, we can see you know we're actively charging and we can adjust our charge limit here as well. So right now we're set at 80%, but let's say we wanna bump it up to 90. We can press and hold on this little triangle here and move it around to whatever set point we want. Sometimes it's a little sticky. And we're now setting it to, you know, 88% is now our charge limit. We can stop charging from here. We can unlock the charge port if we want to release the, the charging uh, cable. We can also adjust our charge current at this location. So right now we're charging at 30 amps. That's the max on this station. But if for whatever reason we want to slow down charging a little bit, we can actually toggle this down and lower it to whatever amps we want. So with EV charging, the car is actually controlling the charger on what it is outputting. So at any time you can go in here and adjust it so it's a little bit slower charge. But I'm gonna leave this up at 30 so we can charge up a little bit faster. And then we can also set a scheduled departure at a location. So if you are at home or a preferred charging location, we can schedule departure here. So like I mentioned, mine is scheduled to precondition and finish charging by 8 a.m and precondition and get everything set up. We do also have scheduled charging. So if we do want to delay charging until a certain time, maybe you've got cheaper electricity rates starting at a certain time, you can toggle that on to say, I don't wanna start charging until you know 10.30 p.m. when electricity rates are cheaper. It will not start until that time. You'll also see your most recent paid charging session. So this is for supercharging mainly. You can see the last time I supercharged was in Dublin um, around Christmas time and I've not supercharged since and it's now you know March so with good home charging you generally don't need it. You've also got supercharging tips here so if you do want to open these up and just get some tips on supercharging these do pop up um, when you do stop at a supercharger now if you haven't seen it before so just some tips about supercharging that are valuable um, if you're new to supercharging or wondering why you're not charging as fast. That's it on the charging page let's jump to autopilot now so 
This is a screen that may look different depending on what you have unlocked on your vehicle. So I do have, you know, navigate on autopilot. I have enhanced autopilot is one of the things I bought to unlock on my car. However, I do not have full self-driving and I do not have full self-driving beta. So this screen may look a little bit different depending on what things you have unlocked. At the top here, I've got auto steer beta turned on. That is just adaptive cruise control and lane keep is all um, auto steer is. So again, that is that is in beta. So when you toggle that on, you know, you're you're agreeing to all of the terms kind of of beta there. You've also got the option to turn on navigate on autopilot. So again, this is also in beta. This just adds um, lane changing and kind of route taking when you're on autopilot. With just normal autopilot or normal auto steer, you do have to turn off autopilot to change lanes. So that's the main thing that it adds. However, you can customize how this works. So right now, this is how I have it set up. I do have, uh, it is enabled by default at the beginning of every trip and I have speed-based lane changes that are just suggested. It will not take those automatically, and I just have them on mild. So if somebody's just traveling a little bit slow in front of me, it will suggest a lane change. Exit passing lane is turned on. So if I am in the far left lane and have been sitting there for too long, it's gonna tell me that I need to move. And this is the important one here. I do have require lane change confirmation on. So if I change that to yes, I cannot turn, I cannot change lanes until I manually confirm that with the turn signal. So my car is not just gonna change lanes willy nilly. I'm gonna have to confirm that when it happens. You do have the option to turn that off. So if I do disable that, I then have these lane change notifications. So I can either do a chime, a vibrate or both. And that will at least alert you in some way that your car is about to change lanes. So personally, I just like the confirmation on. It feels a little bit safer for me. We've got some other settings here. So we do have full self-driving visualization. That is what we saw while I was driving earlier. That'll show you other cars. It'll show you the lanes. It will show you signs. It will show kind of all that extra stuff um, if you do want to see that while you're driving. I do have summon enabled as well with enhanced autopilot and I can customize that here. So I can set, you know, my bumper clearance, my summon distance. So like how far my car will go. Um, I can set my side clearance. So if I do want I do kind of live in a tighter garage. I can turn that on so it will get a little bit closer than some other uh, some other garages. And you can also require continuous press. So with this turned on, when you're in the app, you do have to hold down on the summon button the entire time to keep your car moving. It's not you can't just press it once and then it drives into place. I think that's a little bit safer to keep it there. We've also got this standby mode, so you can enable this for summon. So this does take a little bit extra battery because it does leave it kind of in standby so that you can summon your car at any time. However, you can also exclude, you know, favorites or workplaces so that you're not using as much energy when your car is sitting in kind of a, a well-known spot. Now down for set speed, these are kind of autopilot settings that everybody should see. So right now, I have it set to, when I turn on autopilot, it will just be set to the speed limit with whatever adjust I have. So instead of, you know, most cruise controls, when you enable them, they just are set to the current speed. Then you have to go in and adjust them. This way it kind of saves me a step when I click on speed limit and set a five miles per hour offset when I'm driving at, you know, 45 miles per hour. But when I turn on autopilot, it will then bump up to 50 miles per hour. if That's the speed limit there. Here's that blind spot camera I talked about. So when I do put on my turn signal, that blind spot monitor or blind spot camera is gonna pop up automatically. And I do have a warning chime for blind spot collisions. So if I do, you know, am getting close to hitting somebody that is in my blind spot or I'm leaving the lane, I will get a chime saying, you know, I'm getting close to hitting somebody, so be careful. We've also got some speed limit warnings here. So you can set it to chime if you do go above the speed limit. Right now, I just have it to display. You may have seen when I was driving, the speed limit sign just gets a little bigger to show me that I am going above the speed limit. That's all that does. And then that speed limit warning you can adjust as well. So if you know you don't want to be alerted unless you're going 10 over, you could adjust that to say, hey, I don't, I don't really want an alert unless I'm going, you know, really, really far over the speed limit. 
We've got some more warnings at the bottom here. You can set the forward collision warning. Highly recommend this one. This one has saved me a couple times if I'm maybe not paying full attention or I don't realize how quick somebody in front of me is stopping. This will alert you pretty, pretty loudly to say that you're getting close to hitting somebody in front of you. We've also got the lane departure avoidance warning. So if I am not on autopilot, it will still give me that warning to show me that I'm drifting outside of the lane. And you can also set this to assist as well. So if you do like that where you know, your drift out of the lane and it kind of pulls you back into the lane, you can turn on that assist. I like it just as a warning. And then at the bottom here, we've got emergency lane departure avoidance. This will just alert you if you are departing your lane. Automatic emergency braking. Again, if you are about to hit somebody, um, I've actually done this when parked. I almost backed into another car. Uh, this will just automatically emergency brake and stop your car if you're that close to hitting somebody. And then you've also got obstacle aware acceleration. So if you do have, you know, an obstacle in the way or um, any kind of issue that autopilot or your car may run into, this will adjust and accelerate your vehicle depending on what kind of situation you're in to avoid that. We've also got traffic aware cruise, cruise control t chime. So like I showed when I was driving, if you just click down once on the stock, the traffic aware cruise control uh, chime will happen to show you that you are on cruise control and you haven't completely shut off all of the, the kind of driver assist features. And then at the bottom here is that green light chime. So this will chime your car, like I showed at that stoplight, when you're the first car in line, it will chime when the light turns green so that you know that it's time to get rolling. And that's about it on the autopilot screen. Let's jump into locks next. So at the top of the screen, you have this add key button. Either you can do it via the phone app or you can add a key fob or key card. You can do that pretty easily from there. And then you've also got all of the current keys you have linked to your vehicle right there. So you can see my phone is the key that's attached right now. You can see all of the key cards I have as well are also shown on here. And then if you're in a, um, in a kind of driver profile, you can actually link it to your driver profile. Um, so if we jump back into myself here, since this is a driving profile, you can see my name is actually linked to my phone here. So when I get in the car, it's gonna automatically set my driver profile. However, you can see Mallory is linked to her iPhone. So when her iPhone connects, it's actually gonna set to her seat position, you know, her climate control, all that stuff so that it's all more comfortable for her. You obviously can link that to key cards as well if you do have just a key card you're giving to somebody. You can also adjust child locks here, like was on the main quick controls. We've got our window lock settings here that were similar on the quick controls. We've also got the walk away door lock. So if you do want to, you know, have your car lock automatically, which I really like, you don't have to manually, you know, click on your key fob or your phone to lock your doors. This will just lock your door when you get far enough away from your car. We've also got this driver door unlock mode, which is a newer setting. So when enabled, this is only gonna unlock uh, your charge port and the driver door when your key is connected. So, you know, like some other cars I've tested, when you click on the key fob, it only unlocks the driver door, then you have to unlock again to unlock the other doors in the car. So if that makes you feel safer, you can set that setting on. So that's the only door that's unlocking when you get close to your vehicle. You can also set it to unlock on park. So when you do place the vehicle in park, it's just gonna stay unlocked and unlock automatically. You can turn that off if you feel safer kind of manually unlocking your car. And then we've got some notifications as well that come through in the app. These are very handy if you do leave a door or window open for whatever reason, you can set a notification to come on through the app if you do leave any of these open for more than 10 minutes. So really handy there. And then we've also got our lock confirmation sound and our close windows on lock. I like both of these settings a lot because I don't have to worry about, you know, closing things up and double checking things when I am locking up my car. And at the bottom here, like we showed at the top here, you can link your MyQ account for, you know, linking a garage door to your vehicle. That's about it on the lock screen. Let's jump down into lights. Similar to the quick controls, we've got, you know, you can just turn your lights off. You can set parking lights. You can turn headlights on or you can turn them on auto. If you do have fog lights, you can toggle those on and off here. You can adjust your dome lights that are inside the vehicle from here. So you can set, you know, off, on, or auto. You can also set your ambient lights. So those are your footwell and kind of extra lights around the vehicle. If you want to turn those on and off, you can do that there. We've also got auto turn signals on. So 
for this, your turn signals will automatically turn off for merging or lane changes or things like that where your turn signals might not normally turn off uh, based on the steering angle. So sometimes if you are changing lanes, you have to manually turn off your turn signal. You can actually uh, turn that turn that on to auto cancel there. I've also got auto high beams, so you can toggle those on if you do want high beams just kind of to be on automatically all the time anytime you turn on your lights. I don't like those as much. They've been a little bit finicky. You've got headlights after exit, so if you do exit your vehicle and it's dark out, you can leave your headlights on after you hop out of the car. And then you can also turn on and off your steering wheel lights here. So there are some small lights on the steering wheel. You can decide if you want those on or off. Let's jump into display now. So we've got a lot of options on this screen. You can set the appearance here. I've actually been a big fan of the dark appearance recently where you can toggle on and see kind of the darker version of the screen all the time. You can also set auto. So if it is, you know, getting dark out, it will just automatically turn to dark. Um, but for this tutorial, I've been keeping it on light because it's a little bit more, a little bit easier to see visually. You can also adjust the brightness here. So if you want to get it a little bit darker, a little bit brighter, or you can toggle on auto there as well. Also got screen clean mode. So if you do turn that on, it's gonna darken your screen so you can see you know, where your screen is a little bit dirty. We'll go ahead and wipe it off since I've been touching the screen a bunch here. And then after you're done here, you can just click down on here to hold to exit. You just gotta hold it down for five seconds and we'll get back to the main screen here. You can set the language for our touchscreen as well. So lots of different languages that are available here depending on what your preferred language is. We've got different voice recognition languages as well. We've got different navigation languages, depending on what language you prefer. We can adjust our time to either 12 or 24 hour. So we can adjust that depending on what you prefer. You can change our energy display. You can set it manual in here like I've been talking about, or you know the quicker way is to just click on the little percentage or miles button at the top. We can change our distance preference to either kilometers or miles. Temperature preference, either Celsius or Fahrenheit and then tire pressure, either bar or PSI. So you can see on the left here, that's changing as we adjust that. Now let's jump down to trips. So this is one of the ways that we can see the current trips we've been taking on our car. So we can see, we've also got this little checkbox to sh either show it on the trip card or not. So if I you know toggle this off, you'll see my trip card is now adjusted to say, you know, my current trip is not on the, not on the cards here. We can adjust, you know, all of these different cards, you know, which ones we want to see on the trips cards. If you ever want to reset any of these, you can, you know, reset your, your lifetime or reset your, your tire rotation. Um, these are ones that you can rename. So I've got one, you know, just for my tire rotation and I've got just a lifetime trip so I can see how much energy I've used in the lifetime of my car, which is pretty neat. And you can also toggle on and off the odometer here as well at the bottom. So that's gonna show you know, how many miles you've driven. This is nice for just seeing kind of average energy over your trip, but we'll show the energy screen a little bit, which shows a little bit more in-depth information. If we jump down into navigation, this is the same information we saw on the map screen, but if you do wanna set it from the main car menu, you can adjust all of those same settings in here. We'll jump down to safety. We've got sentry mode at the top here. This is gonna monitor the vehicle. If anybody gets close, it's gonna you know, flash the lights and record people walking around the vehicle, maybe doing anything that you might not want to your car. You can exclude certain locations as well, similar to a lot of the other settings. If you don't want this on at home or work or other favorites, you can turn those on there. I've got a uh, camera-based deten uh, detection set on here. So it's using the cameras to monitor everything around the vehicle. We've got sentry sounds, so we can disable those if we'd like, if you don't want it to honk or, you know, generate sound if people are trying to break into the vehicle, you can turn that off, but, you know, we want those on. And then we've also got this live camera view in the mobile app. So if you do want to be able to see a live view of your cameras from your app, you have to toggle that setting on there. Our dash cam de then at the bottom here, we can either set it off manual or auto. Um, I just have it on to be running all the time. And I've also got this on honk uh, setting as well. So if I do honk my horn at any time, which I generally do if I'm in kind of a, a bad situation when I'm driving, I will get a recording of that clip so it's saved automatically. If you wanna delete those clips, you can do that from here. Or if you need to format the USB drive you have connected to your vehicle, you can do that with that button. We've got this allow mobile access at the bottom. So that is just for you know general app access to the car. You do have to have that toggled on if you want to you know, see, see access to your car from the mobile app. 
We've got pin to drive. So if you do put this on, you have a pin now. So you have to enter in that, uh, that pin before you're able to drive your car. We've also got a glove box pin. So if we, if we put that on, we then need a pin to open up the glove box. So if you don't have, uh, if you have, you know, things you want to keep safe in your glove box, you don't want anybody opening them, you can set a pin there. We've got speed limit mode here. So if you do want to restrict speed of the vehicle, you can adjust that, you know, top end miles per hour there. We've got cabin overheat protection. So this will turn on your AC or just cool down the car if it gets above 100 degrees. Um, keep in mind, this does not, uh, this only does it every 12 hours. So if your car has not been plugged in or you've just left your car out for more than 12 hours, this gets turned off automatically. So this is more for, you know, if you're traveling or gonna be, you know, coming in out of stores on a hot day, this is a good thing to keep on, but it's not gonna be best for, you know, long-term storage of your car. You've got either no AC or, or AC on options here as well. And you can adjust the, the high end temperature with AC on as well. So we're gonna leave that off. Got the security alarm on because sentry mode is on by default. So our alarm is gonna go off if we get close to the car or somebody tries to break in. We do have park assist chimes as well, which you can turn on if you are getting close to anything with your car, your car is gonna ding. We've also got Joe mode, which I actually have on by default because I like how much quieter all of the autopilot sounds are, but these just reduce the volume of all of the chimes in the car. So these are still loud enough to alert you, but they aren't gonna be you know, as loud as normal. And I like that because it's not as disruptive when I'm driving. And then we've also got our parking brake. So if I do put my foot on the brake, you'll see our parking brake uh, is able to be turned on. So we've actually got the parking brake just to turn on automatically. And you can see now our parking brake is turned on if we look on the left side there. If we do need to power off the touchscreen or power off the car completely, we can click that button there. That's gonna shut off everything on the car and essentially reset it. So if we do need to power anything off or reset the vehicle, we can do that from there. If we jump down into service, we can just see some basic service information here. So we can see you know, our current tire pressure on all of our vehicles. We can see the recommended pressure as well, depending on our, um, our vehicle configuration. We can also access the owner's manual from here. So if we do have any questions, if my tutorial isn't doing a good enough job here of the touchscreen, you can look up any settings or anything you need to on the owner's manual here. This is searchable as well, which is pretty nice. So if you are looking for a specific thing, you know, let's just say like charging, we can, we can look that up from the user's manual here and see what, uh, what kind of options we've got on the user's manual. So this is a little touchy, probably a little bit easier to, to access online, but it is available here if you need to look at any kind of information about the vehicle. We jump back into service here. We've also got the ability to adjust the headlights. So if we do wanna adjust anything on the headlights, we can do that from that setting there. We can put in tow mode. So if you are you know, gonna be towing your vehicle, this will be where you toggle on that setting. You can also reset our TPMS sensors. I'm not gonna do that right now, but if you have you know, adjusted them or put new ones in, you can do that from there. If you have changed your wheels or anything like that recently, you can also set all of that configuration here as well. So you can see I currently have my 18 inch arrows on. When I switch to my summer tires, I'm gonna go in here and change that. Same with the tires as well. So I have you know winter tires on right now, so I have all of those set. I've also got notifications that will just pop up and show me all the alerts that I showed earlier. I've got camera preview here. And this is, I believe, this is the in-cabin preview, so you can get a little shot of me doing my tutorial here. We've also got camera calibration. So if we need to you know, recalibrate the autopilot cameras, we can do that from here to, you know, if you're having issues with autopilot, this is definitely something I would recommend doing. You can also recalibrate all of your kind of motor controls of the seats or anything in the car, just to make sure it's able to kind of hit its main, uh, able to hit all its full range of motion and, and do all the things it needs to do. If we need to clear browsing data, we can do that there. And we've also got a factory reset there as well. That will you know, wipe everything on the car, set it into factory mode. We've also got wiper service mode. So if we click on that, that will just pop the wipers up a little bit so that they are easier to be, easier to be serviced. So when you're swapping out the wipers, 
and you can also, you know, it's better for snow so that it doesn't stick to the windshield as easily. So we'll turn that off. That is about it on the service tab. If we jump into software here, we can see, you know, what our car looks like. We can also change the look of our car. So if you do want to adjust, you know, the color of your car, let's say I want to make it like an orange color, I can do that in here. And you'll see that'll then change the look of my car. So I don't really want to do that, but it looks like it's changed automatically, actually. So I'm going to actually change back to my normal color. There we go. <laughs> so we're now back in back in normal car looking mode. You can see my current vehicle. So if you were curious, I have a, a Model 3 long range dual motor. This is a 2020 model. Got about 55,000 miles on it. You can see my current autopilot computer right here as well. If I click on additional vehicle information, you can see even more information about my vehicle. So you can see you know, what audio system I have, if I have CCS adapter support, what kind of cabin heater I have, all of this stuff is gonna show up in here if you or curious about what your vehicles come with compared to, you know, some other vehicles and other Teslas out here. It's a lot easier to look in here and then try to, you know, tear apart the car to see some of these things. I've also got these different packages I have. So like I said, I do have enhanced autopilot. So I purchased this in I think September of 2019. Kind of just gives you a quick blurb of what that is. And I also have premium connectivity. So just a few of the features that come with that are, you know, satellite view. I've got live traffic, I've got video and music streaming, just something I pay for to make things a little bit easier on here. I've also got my current software, so I'm currently on version 11.1. I just updated my car last night, so it should be pretty up to date with the recent Tesla updates. If you do wanna see release notes on that, you can click on that and see what has been released in the recent Tesla software updates. As you can see, the most recent one was just some bug fixes, but the one before that got some new sentry mode lighting, so. Just kind of minor things there, but you can, you know, scroll through and see what's been going on. I've also got our software update preference. So if it is, you know, standard is just going to get updates kind of as they come out, whereas advanced is you're getting kind of the most recent updates as soon as they're available. I haven't seen, you know, a huge difference between this, but I figured, you know, advanced is better if I want the, the newer software. I've also got data sharing here. So this is something where if you do, this is a lot of, you know, products have this, but if you are okay with sending, you know, um, driver data to Tesla, you can turn this on and it basically allows them to see things and, you know, see what's going on with your vehicle so that they can make their products better. At the bottom here, we've then got upgrades. So if I click on this, you can see what upgrades you may have available for your car. So right now I have, you know, the full self-driving I could upgrade to, and that is it in the, <laughs> in the vehicle here. I'm actually surprised that the acceleration, um, boost is not in here because that is another upgrade I have available in my car. But anyway, that is upgrades. So we'll close out of that and swipe down the release notes. We'll get rid of that trip as well. And that is it kind of on the main menu here. Let's jump down into this bottom bar and we've got a lot on this screen. So I'm going to just kind of walk through some of the apps one by one. We'll start with the energy one because I think this is the most interesting one. There's a lot on this uh, this tab. This is our new energy screen though. So if you are familiar with other uh, older versions of the software, this is what our energy screen used to look like. You can see you know, our average watt hours per mile, our projected range, all based on kind of the last 30 miles. You can adjust it to show instant range as well. So based on you know my, my most recent 30 miles, it thinks I can get almost 600 miles. So you can adjust all that. But then if we jump into these other tabs they've added, we can see what our trip is gonna look like and what is kind of the estimated trip based on all of our different driving conditions, climate, battery conditioning, all of this stuff is now shown as what is contributing to how efficient your driving is. So we can see, you know, broken out by how much uh, of the, the battery was actually used for these certain things. So if you are curious, you know, what is going on with my driving? Why am I not getting as much range as possible? This screen is now showing a lot of that information. Not a lot in drive here, but I've been jumping to park. I can now see, you know, what my car has been consuming the past, um, you know, hour or so. Let's see if we maybe change this to last drive. You know, I'm plugged in right now and messing with my car, so all these are showing zero. But you can say, you know, why, while your car was parked, why is it losing energy? This is, an, again, another thing to kind of see how much all of these extra features are really taking from 
your car's battery. We've also got the browser. So if you do want to, you know, pull up and use the browser to look up things on the on the car, you can do that. My car is using the older chip, so it's a little bit slower loading some of these things, but you do have the browser option there. We've also got the music. So we've got a lot of different options here. And if we open up just like Spotify, for example, and I'm listening to my favorite podcast, um, we can see some more of the music kind of settings in here. So we're only seeing some of these basic music ones here. We've got Spotify on here, Bluetooth, radio, karaoke, um, and any USB songs you may have on there. But once you're in any kind of music thing, you can search from here. This will search all you know, music things you have turned on, all sources you have turned on. But if you want to change any settings with the music, this is where you would do it. So you can adjust, you know, your, your equalizer here, how you want to have that set. You can change the balance. So, you know, if it's just you in the car, you can set it to your seat. Um, but if you want it kind of normal, you can set it to the center. We've got some options here. The only thing here is just mobile control. This is if you want to control music from your phone. And then we've got sources here as well. So if you do have some of these other audio sources, you can toggle these on and then have those options available. So I really only use Spotify and maybe Bluetooth occasionally and the radio every once in a while, but I just have some of these other sources turned on that I use more often just to leave it less cluttered down here. But that is music. Um, we've then just got some phone connectivity pieces. So We've got the calendar here. You can see, you know, what my calendar is looking like, depending on what things I have on my calendar. Um, and then once you open that up, you can then see kind of the other things that are connected to your phone. So if I jump into calls, that will, you know, be this icon here. You can see who I've been calling recently. You can see your contacts here. You can see favorites. So if you, you know you want to quickly, quickly call people, you can do that from here. We've got messages then as well. So if you do have any messages that have popped up, you can see what the uh, what the most recent messages you have are. But those are all kind of phone connectivity pieces. The other kind of Tesla main features here, we've got the camera. So this is our dash cam here. We can see our most recent drive where we've been driving and see some information here if this loads up. So once this loads up, you can see the dash cam of the most recent, you know, driving I've done. If we click on this on the far left, this will then show, you know, we can either see all, we can see century events, or we can see our dash cam events. So this are any that are saved, and then all will just show, you know, the most recent. So it's continually looping and recording. So if you just want to see the most recent, it'll be at the top here. And then all of the century clips are kind of organized here. And then if you just want to see your dash cam clips, you can see all those here as well. We've got our camera at the bottom here as well. So if we click on that, it'll show us behind our car. And then we've also got both sides up here. If you do swipe down on this and only want to see the rear view, you can do that. But I like seeing all three cameras there. And then we've also got the last few here, our theater, arcade, and toy box. So we'll just click on arcade first. And again, these are kind of additional screens we've got here. We've got different games we can play here. I'm not gonna go through all the games, but you can see kind of all the options that are built into the vehicle here. If we go to Toy Box, we've got some additional things here that just kind of some fun features that Tesla has added. So we've got, you know, our light show is hidden in here, our boom box, emissions testing mode, our, our DJ tracks, stuff like that. And then theater mode, if we click on that, we've got access to, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, YouTube, all that stuff will be in here. We've also got some Tesla tutorials if you wanna see anything else about how to use your Tesla. And I believe that is all the apps there. Like I mentioned, if you press and hold on these, you can then add additional apps here. We've just got some additional climate settings we can add to this apps button if you wanna be able to access those more quickly. And then we've also got this volume control on the far right here. So you can either adjust it on the touch screen here, or as you can see, it's actually giving me this tip here. You can just adjust it with the left scroll wheel. And I think that is it. I think I got through all the features here. If you do have any questions about specific features, definitely let me know down in the comments, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.